Well, let's start here with three parallel lines, R, S, and T, and pass one transversal, L, and a second transversal, M, through them. This theorem tells me that orange is to blue as orange is to blue. Well, if you want to write that down, you may have to put some points in there. Let's label the points. We kept it the same as the book here. And our proportion, should we choose to write it down, looks like that. Now, um, I could move this around, make a lot of different shapes, but watch what I do here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to keep moving this until V and U just become a single point. Let's get rid of one of those. V, U. That should look a lot like, hey, that's theorem 6-4. It's the same as the triangle proportionality theorem. Three parallel lines cut by transversals. So, um, let's see. Check these out one at a time. PQ is to UT as QR is to TS. That one looks good. I'll say okay. How about this one? B. I've got TS is to um, UT. Oh, that's over here. As QR is to PQ. That's good. How about C? QR is to RS. Hmm. As, nope. TS over here is to RS. That one gets a capital bogus. Now it could be true, and the only way it's true, since they're both um, proportional to the same one, they, these two would have to be equal. So QR would have to be equal to TS. Possible, but not necessary. So this is our problem child right here. But we'll just check right here to make sure the last one is okay. We've got PQ is to PR. Hmm as UT is to US. That one's okay. So there you go. Well, this is a very interesting diagram. So many variables. And um, yeah, I'm not going to give you any answers, but I'll show you how to set them up. I divide them into three groups. The first group, I'll call it the purple ones. I'm going to color code those using theorem 6.6. Six, six, because I've got multiple parallel lines, and I'm going to say these sections of well, it divides the transversals proportionally. Yeah, that's what I want. So, in the first case, I'm going to say that E is to 12 as this 5 is to 15. Now, I'm going to keep using the 12 and the 15 because those are my givens. Let me do another one. i got another one I can solve that way. How about B? Look at this. You can skip. This is interesting. I can take this B is to this 15 as 12 and a half is to 12. Pretty cool, huh? All right, well, that's as far as theorem 6.6 six is going to take us. Um, slight variation, I'll call it the green one, theorem 6.4. You already see where this is. And that's really almost the same as 6.6, six, but they're talking about a triangle here. Because I've got a, I've got a triangle here, and I've got a triangle here. So. How about this? F is to 12 as 10 is to 15. It's a lot like that other theorem, 6-6, six, six, I know. But there you go. You've got three of the variables worked out. Now, the very last ones, and that is when you're trying to find these, you're not going to use these two theorems. No, 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 no. You're going to use, oh, oh, giving it away. You're going to use similar triangles. This is how. I'm looking at this one. I'm going to look at this overall triangle. Well, that's similar to this triangle. You say it again? This triangle is similar to this triangle. There, got it. So, C is to 5 plus 15 plus 10, 30. That's for the big triangle. As 12 and a half is to 15 plus 10, or 25. All right, I'm going to bore you with the adding, so I'll speed it up for the last two. Here we go. How about another one? How about D? Well, actually, D is the easy one, because D is to 10. That's for the we triangle. Comparing it now to this triangle, as 12 and a half 
these two again. 15 plus 10, 25. So as 15, or as 12 and a half is to 25. All right, and there's one last one way out here on A. Now, I'm going to leave a second variable in this, but that's only because we haven't, you're going to have to solve it in one of your earlier proportions. And I'm going to say that A is to all these, that's your 25, and whatever you came up with for B. So A is to that as, guess what? Same thing again, as 12 and a half is to 15 plus 10. So you're going to use this triangle similar to the overall triangle. And that's it. That's the setup for, or that's six different proportions. I'll let you solve them. You know how. Well, here's a very practical application for Theorem 6.6. Six. We've got 174 yards of lake frontage. And according to our theorem, it's going to be divided proportionally to the lots A, B, and C by the 48, 55, and 61 parts. Now, to have a clear picture of what's going on here, imagine this is probably the road out here. And then this is, of course, the lake. And the value of the property may not be all in its area, as you'd expect. Now, that might be when a lake's not involved, but the lake changes the formula a little bit. All the real estate agents know this. So let's, um, let's, do, let's move on. Let's set this up. Just like one of those um, baking exercises, for example, we've got 48 cups and 55 cups and 61 parts. We add up all the pieces and they're equal to 174. Okay, I like that recipe. So now, if I add them all up, I've got 164 parts, or 164x is equal to 174. Now it's calculator time, and you know you're going to get a decimal here. So when you do that, you take your 174, you divide by 164, and I'm going, Leave all those numbers in the register. It's just a good practice. You're going to leave all the, just put that in your memory, times four, multiply it times 48, 55, and 61, respectively. So I'm just going to show you this, but I left all the numbers in the register. I do the rounding after. It's always a good idea to keep the numbers in the register round at the end. And I'm going to come up with these approximations. So right now, my properties look like this as far as frontage. Now, part B of this question asked us, well, in general, if you're paying mostly for lake frontage, which is the most expensive property? And you can see right here, it looks like property C, which may not be the largest area. And that's the funny thing about real estate, but it's got the most lake frontage. So my bet would be if this axiom holds over here, I'd say C is the most expensive lot. Well, let's figure out the prices of the other two lots, B and C, now. And it's a good time to learn a little about sig figs if your chemistry teacher hasn't already told you. So I've got this 100,000 lot over here. Well, let's set up this ratio this way. This lot, B, is to 55 yards as 100,000 is to 48 yards. You might be saying, wait a minute, Mr. Banish, they told me it's proportional to the lake frontage. That's true. So B is to 58.4 as 100,000 is to 50.9. They should both be true because after all, they're in the same ratio of proportion. However, we've rounded here so watch what happens. This is worth watching. Let's take our calculators. Let's do the first one. I'm going to go 55, well, 55 times 100,000, so that's five and a half million. All right, there you go. And I'm going to divide that by 48. Okay, take a good look at that number, 114,583. All right, let's do it this way. 8.4. You know, how many zeros do I need there? And another three. All right, so that's 5.84 million. And I'm going to divide that times 
Whoa, ho, ho. 114743 That's a difference of over $200. Um, but I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter. Because I mean, you've got to be crazy to think that someone's going to ask you for pennies on a property. I see the price, 115000 That's close enough. Um, I've never seen a property like this listed for $115,723. So, let's try the other one. Honestly, I'd use the ratio with the given sides only because these numbers don't have decimals in them. So, it's the same whether you use the blue or whether you use the ones we solved for here. And there you go on this one. Yeah, I'd say it's about... 127,000.